everybody. It's been a while since we've done a travel with Rick video, you know, and I'm so bummed this year. Well, last year either. We, well, last year we went just kind of walked through really, really quick. But this year, definitely no trips to food and wine for me. So I'm kind of bummed. So if you can't make it to food and wine, the next best thing you can do is talk to a friend that's been. That's why I invited Megan on today. Hey, Megan, how you doing? Hey, Rick, I'm good. How are you? Good. Megan is coming to us from Pennsylvania, where you said it's a little colder there today, right? Yes, it's in the 30s right now. And this time last week, I was by a pool in Florida. <laughs> well, I'm go. not used to it yet, no. Florida's a great place to be right now. It's pretty nice down here. Well, anyway, Megan is our social media director at Kingdom Magic Vacations and Must Love Travel. Welcome, Megan. It's great to have you on. And you were just in Walt Disney World last week at the Food and Wine Festival, right? I was, yes. This time last week, like I said, me and my family, we were down on our annual trip to Disney during the fall. We always plan a trip to Walt Disney World during the fall to get to see, well, all the great decorations that they have and everything in Magic Kingdom is just so amazing. But our favorite thing that they have this time of year is in Epcot. That's the Epcot International Food and Wine Festival. So it's become a kind of a tradition that we plan a trip plan a visit to Disney during the festival so we get to see it. You know, I hadn't missed one for a long, long, as a matter of fact, we've been going since the very beginning of Food and Wine Festivals and unfortunately schedules the last couple of years have just made it difficult. And, you know, we were just, uh, you know, we've just been traveling a lot and just haven't prioritized getting there. So I'm really disappointed that we weren't or won't be able to, but I definitely wanted, after talking with you and hearing about your trip, I definitely wanted to do a video and, and share with some of our Travel with Rick friends out there some of your experiences and uh, get me salivating for some of that awesome <laughs> Epcot food and wine. So let's talk about some of your favorite things. You said you made up a list of the five things, right, that you like the best? I did, yeah. I have my list that I made of my top five things that I tried during our visit. All right, so you're going to start with your favorite or you're going to start it the other way? Which way are you going to tell us? Uh, let's do, let's count it down to number one, number don't you think? Down. Okay, right. let's do that. What do you got? <laughs> All right, so let's start with number five. So this five. one is one that I picked because it was really just kind of a wow factor for me. Um, it was a 100% vegan dish. So it was the Impossible Burger from Earth Eats. <laughs> <laughs> really? A vegan hamburger? Come on, you got to convince me on this one. I'm, I'm not That's sure. what I thought, too. I was like, how could this possibly, you know, be a, you know, vegan dish and also taste like a hamburger, which is what I was hearing everybody say. So the curiosity got the best of me. And I was like, okay, I have to try this out for myself. So I ended up getting it and I was very shocked. It somehow still had the char grilled taste of a real burger. It had the consistency. So, I mean, to me, I really couldn't tell the difference. It tasted like an actual burger and I liked everything else and how they kind of doctored it up. They had a wasabi cream on top and also an Asian slaw. And so that really made it very flavorful, kind of gave it a little bit of a crunch on there as well. So I think for me, it was just kind of, the reason it made my list was just, it was so shocking that it actually, it, it convinced me it tasted mm. like a real burger. <laughs> All right. Well, they say seeing is believing. I may have to uh, go and try that one for myself. But OK, yeah. moving, moving right along. Number four. All right. Number four. So this one is a returning favorite for me that I have to get every year. I don't feel like I've been to the Food and Wine Festival unless I've had this item. And it is the Kahlua Pork Slider from Hawaii. So oh, it is so good, isn't it? I love that one. It definitely, yes. you know, every year when we go, that's definitely a got to have for us as well. I love right. that. <laughs> yeah, it is just so good. It's the pineapple chutney that they put on top. That's what makes it that dull pineapple chutney. It gives it that little bit of sweet and savory. You get that sweet and sour element in there. It is so good. So yeah. every year I always joke around. I always say the one thing that can make it better is if it was like this big right. as opposed yeah, to like double size. Right? Like the only, yeah. only thing that could make it any better. Right, right. Yeah. And I love the bread they use. You know, they use that King Hawaiian, that sweet, you know, soft, nice roll that they have with it. Yeah. Everything just goes so well, you know, and I hear it goes really good with the uh, Sammy Hagar beach rum my type thing that they serve <laughs> with it but I, tell me Megan are you old enough I mean you, you look kind of young to me are you, are you 21 <laughs> I am this was actually the first year after years of always attending food and wine 
I just turned 21 over the summer. So this was my first official food and wine getting to partake in both sectors, both the food and the wine. But I'm now very disappointed because I did not get to try that. I did not do the Mai Tai there in you gotta, Hawaii. You gotta try that Sammy Hagar Beach Road. Gotta get that. <laughs> It's actually a really good thing now that you're now that you're completely legit and legal and you can do all of that. Of course, yes. you know, we, I'll enjoy the clue pork slider even more. <laughs> yeah. All right. Awesome. What's exactly. number three? All right. Number three. So this one is another kind of returning favorite that they've had the past couple of years. And it is the seared scallops from the wine and dine studio. So this is one that somehow they just they knock it out of the park every single year. The scallops are so tender. It is just, it's always a win for me. This year it had a celery root um, puree to it, as well as a truffle sauce. And it's just so good. I love seeing every year, um, even though they've had the scallops the past couple of years, they always make like a slight kind of variation to it. So I always like to see what they do new and different every year. And this year it was just, it was another win. Awesome. Awesome. You know, and, and we were talking earlier about this, you know, it, it's, it always surprises me. They prepare most of that food. They do them right there in those little booths, those marketplaces that they have, you know, and they, it's not like they have a huge commercial kitchen there, but those chefs do so great. And scallops being from Florida, I love seafood. And, you know, the scallops is kind of a funny thing. You can either undercook them or if you overcook them, you know, they can be kind of chewy. And you would think with them preparing so many scallops for so many people in that little booth, you know, the chances are of them getting it wrong. But they don't do they? They come out so good. Yeah. They come out amazing with the job that they do right there in those marketplaces right outside. Right. It's amazing. Right. I know that is just it's so shocking to me, too, that they're able to always do that. And yeah. it's perfect every single year. Like I said, this is a dish that I've gotten the past couple years and I've never had a bad batch. It's always been just cooked to perfection. Awesome. 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 What's next? OK, this brings us to the second item on my list now, and this is going to be the tropical mimosa from the Shimmering Ooh. Sips Mimosa Bar. So this the Shimmering Sips Mimosa Bar, it's located back inside of the festival center and it made its debut this year. It has never um, been there before. So just when I was able to now partake, we now have the Shimmering Sips Mimosa Bar. So as soon as I heard about it, I was excited to try what they had there. And I actually, I had two mimosas from here. I had the Key Lime Mimosa, which was the one I got the first day we went. And that was the one I thought was gonna be my favorite, but actually, it surpassed the second day I tried the tropical mimosa and that became the instant winner. So that's my, it made the spot as my second on my list, this tropical mimosa. It was so good. So what makes it good? What are the ingredients in a tropical mimosa? The tropical mimosa, it had orange, pomegranate and grapefruit juices. And it was just everything together. Yeah. It was just the layering that it did. It, it just made it. Very, very cool. All right, well, we're counting it down. What was your favorite thing? I can't wait to hear. Oh, here we go. So this brings us to the number one pick on my list. And so this is the um, the teriyaki chicken bun from Japan. Wow. So now I love bao buns. The first time that I ever tried a bao bun was actually, it was in Epcot as well, but it was at the table service restaurant, Nine Dragons over in China. And I had it there. I had the fish in the bao bun, and it was so good. And ever since that point, I've always been a fan of the steam buns. And so I got, as soon as I saw that this year they had a steam bun in Japan at the Food and Wine Festival, I knew I had to try it. And it quickly, it jumped to the top of my list and got my number one pick. Um, everything about it. I love the flavors that it had. It kind of had a little bit of a sweet and sour element to it with the sweet teriyaki sauce, the chicken that was in it. It has chicken and vegetables inside and they are just cooked to perfection. So tender. Everything just combined. I loved it so much that actually when we went back to the festival another day during the trip, I got it a second time, which I try to always avoid. I always like when we're at the festival, I like to try different things yeah. and get the most in. But we were passing by the booth and I looked over and saw them and it was just, it was too good. I had to get it a second time. So wow. that's how you know it's good that I had to go back for another one. That's awesome. Yeah, you're right. There is a lot of stuff there. I mean, I heard in times past, we actually did 31 days of food and wine on Travel with Rick. Can you imagine that? We actually go for, well, we don't actually go for 31 days, but we actually buy <laughs> food and do enough things that we have 31 episodes uh, 
during some of our years of doing food and wine festival. We try to get out there and try everything, but there's a lot of marketplaces and a lot of different foods to try, isn't there? Oh my gosh. And they just keep adding new booths as well and new experiences. Like I said, the Shimmering Sips Mimosa Bar, that was a brand new addition this year. And there was a couple of things this year that were brand new. Also the Light Lab, which is over in Future World, yeah. that just premiered last year. And that was actually something I did not get to this time around on this visit, but i um, looking forward to going back in there when I go back in a couple of weeks here. So you're going to be going back there again, huh? I am, yes. This is actually something I just figured out. So I'm really excited. Next month, I am traveling down to Florida for our company cruise. Must Love Travel is going on a cruise on the Celebrity Infinity. But I'm actually coming in a couple days early, flying into Orlando and spending some time at Walt Disney World. And I just realized the day that I get in is November 12th which is the very last day of the International Food and Wine Festival for this year. So our plan is to get right off the plane and head right into Epcot and get to have one last round of the festival. Well, listen, when you do that, you got to come back and you got to tell us more. Maybe when we're on the ship, we're doing that cruise together for our company. Like you said, maybe we can sit down and actually do a video together and uh, we'll talk about what you like on your next trip back there since again i'm not going to be able to make it and the best thing you can do if you can't be there is have a friend to tell you all about their experience right that's a good plan yeah i'd love to talk about it like i said there's i already made a list of the things that i want to hit this time around during our last sweep of the festival when we get to go so yeah light labs one of them and i have a couple other items that i'm yeah, looking forward to getting in again Awesome. Well, I can't wait to hear more about that. Maybe we'll share another video with our friends out on Travel with Rick. It's been a while since we've done these videos. As we know, we know people love to hear our stories about food and wine, right? I so wish I could have been there, but it was great to get a chance to sit down and talk with you about your experience. So thanks for joining us. Guys, thanks everybody for watching. Megan, we really appreciate it. Come on back and tell us about your next experience. All right. <laughs> Oh, absolutely. This was so fun. I'm happy to be here. All right, cool. Thanks for watching, everybody. Have a great time if you're at Food and Wine. If you're not, uh, get on out there and try it. Try it. Like Megan said, it's going on to November 12th. So lots of good things to try at Epcot. And uh, leave us some comments. Tell us what you think about Megan's top five. Maybe leave us some of your favorite things in the comments below or on the website. Thanks for watching. Have a great time, everybody. So long.